Hi, I'm Heidi Heron from the Worldwide Institutes of NLP. Today, I'm going to talk about an NLP process called spinning icons. If you're familiar with NLP, you have heard about submodalities. Submodalities are the building blocks of our thoughts. They are included in how we think about just about everything. And our mind and our body create the coding of our mind based on our five senses. So what we see, say, taste, touch, smell, think to ourselves. Each of those modalities, take visual for example, there's subcomponents of those modalities. There is, like if we're seeing a picture in black and white, or if it's color, if it's a big picture, a little picture, if it's dear to us, if it's far away, if it's big or small, the location of it. Even the sounds and the feelings have different qualities of them. Now we can start to shift and change these qualities and shift and change what we are believing, thinking, understanding, connecting with. And that's a magnificent way to utilize and change aspects that are not working for you or utilize what is working for you. Spinning icons is an interesting process that I learned from Steve Andreas and he learned from, I believe, Nick Kemp. And it's a process of identifying a feeling and the submodalities of the feeling. Let's say, for example, um, I had a, a, a fear in, and I held that fear, maybe it's anxiety and I hold it here. So we start to identify what are the submodalities, the components that go with that. So maybe this fear is a, a, a blue pulsing type of, of blob, because that's sometimes how submodalities work. So we just identify some of the submodalities of it. So I've got this blue pulsing blob, and I ask which way is it spinning, which presupposes that there is movement. If somebody says it's not spinning, then I just ask what kind of movement does it have? Because most things that have feeling with them, there is some sort of movement with it. Even stuck sometimes has a movement. So, and if it doesn't, then I wouldn't use spinning icon icons. I would use a different type of process. But let's say I've got this, this blue pulsing blob and I ask which way is it spinning? And it's actually spinning in a clockwise direction. So I would notice that for a moment and have my client or whoever I'm working with notice it if it's not me and then simply spin it in the other direction. And it's an interesting thing that kinesthetic submodality of movement and when we start shifting it and moving it in a different direction actually changes the feelings, changes the concepts, changes the submodalities, the connections, and ultimately what we do next. We have complete control over what's going on inside of our minds, inside of our bodies, if we choose to. And if we utilize something like spinning icons, we have more choice, more purpose, and more ability to be in charge of ourselves.